your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in, everybody, to another edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. As always, your host, Gino Camilleri, bringing you another edition of the show presented by the Locked On Podcast Network. And now with the NFL right around the corner, Locked On is presenting Locked On Podcast Network's ultimate season preview, which is running through August the 30th through September the 8th. And it is taking you through every team and every division with the help of Odyssey's Ross Tucker and Jason Locke and Fora. Follow the ultimate season preview 2021 feed on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast. Tune in beginning August 30th. Remember going through September 8th. We will be on there talking about the NFC East, where we think we stack up. And some of the other hosts believe that one team that I am not as high on has a chance to go far in this division. And that's what makes it fun. That's why the NFC East is always a good conversation. And it's always a division that will keep you on your toes. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about where this team stands in terms of youth and where they should go in the realms of looking for college players going forward because being week one everybody has their eyes attached to the screens watching college football while they have no NFL action going on until next week this is all the football we will be watching and I wanted to do a show on some guys that I'm keeping an eye on this weekend and then at the end segment three we're going to introduce a new segment that we will be doing throughout this NFL season Lou and I are going to go back and forth on a little betting action so we're going to get involved with our friends at betonline.ag continue to promote them continue to get our fans involved with the game because gambling is legal it's bigger than ever in football and a lot of it comes down to where these guys come from in college what nfl teams they end up on and that's how the lines are set when they look at the rosters week one we have no proven action right now you're looking at the rosters on paper to see who is going to stack up against their opponents and talking about the eagles we talk about the youth movement here, and with college football going on, there's going to be an influx of future Eagles next year with two future first-round picks as well as a conditional second that could turn into a first-round pick. Howie Roseman has stacked up well in these last two drafts, compiling over eight picks in both of the last two years. He's done a pretty decent job since 2019 drafting, and when you look at it, the teams that succeed – in this modern day are the teams that have a young quarterback on a rookie contract and plenty of other rookies around them or rookie deals. I should say rather that allows you to spend a little more on your defensive line. Just look at the Philadelphia Eagles. You're paying Fletcher Cox, Siobhan Hargrave, Brandon Graham. You're going to have to pay Josh sweat, but the great news is, and I tweeted this out the other day on offense and hopefully defense will get younger in the coming years. On offense, you currently have on rookie deals, your quarterback one in Jalen Hurts, your quarterback two of the future. I believe he would be the better option to go into a game in Gardner Minshew this year. Your wide receiver one, your wide receiver three, your wide receiver two, I skipped over two, excuse me. So you have Devontae Smith, you have Jalen Rager, you have Quez Watkins, you still have J.J. Ortega Whiteside on a rookie deal. You have Kasim Johnson on the practice squad on a rookie deal. So you have plenty of options there at wide receiver as well. As well. You have tight end 1B, who is also on a rookie deal. Your running back 1 is on a rookie deal. Your running back 3 is on a rookie deal. Your left tackle 1, your left tackle 2, your offensive center 2, your swing tackle 1. And then you have loads of talent on the practice squad. That just opens up, as Howie Roseman likes to say, optionality. And the idea that this Eagles team is going to have a young roster moving forward, as you see guys like Brandon Graham most likely going to retire in the coming years. I'm sure Rodney McLeod, with his injury history and what they have to do at safety, not having anybody locked up, you might not see him for too much longer. Darius Slay, Steven Nelson, we have to start looking past those guys on the defensive side of the ball, because currently on offense, we have done that. We got rid of the Elshon Jeffries. We even cut the Jordan Howards of the world. Outside of the offensive line, which has young talent, 
in the wings. They are a little bit older starting, but they're starting to develop talent there in Jack Driscoll. You just drafted Landon Dickerson. You have two young tackles in Jordan Mailata, who your starter is, and Andre Dillard. Isaac Sayamalu is on a very team-friendly deal. So now this wave that you have in football of it being a three-year type of cycle, this offense is going to be young for a couple years. The defense is going to be a little older, and then it's going to start to balance itself out. Because I believe that many of the guys I'm going to mention here in this next segment where I talk about some of the guys I'm watching this weekend, and we're going to do that throughout the season as we get into draft season, of course, I believe that defense is the number one priority going into the next draft. Because on offense, I think you have really solved everything. And it's a big if on if Jalen Hurts can come out and be your franchise quarterback, which I think he has everything behind him right now in terms of weapons to make it happen. His offensive line is healthy. Healthy, excuse me. He can make that happen. I, I have all confidence in Jalen Hurts right now with the coaching staff and what they're going to do. So with that, having an answer at quarterback, at least for this year and next year, you can go into the draft next year and take those potential three first round picks. And if there's a player, an all pro caliber player that could come out and right away start for you at a position of need on defense, much like you did on offense this year by going up and getting Devontae Smith. That's why you compile resources. And that's why Howie Roseman is very good at his job when it comes to getting draft capital. And he knew the mistakes he made when he only had five picks and back-to-back drafts, only really nine because they cut Clayton Thorson in that training camp. You can't do that if you want to succeed year after year after year. Even when you have veterans on the team, you're going to have to replace them with young talent soon enough. So now that if you can walk into a draft with nine plus draft picks every single year and a lot of them being day one and day two picks, you're going to be able to kind of fill in the blanks, fill in the question marks, develop that young talent and even find all pro starters in round one, which I very much believe that Devontae Smith could be in a lot of these guys that they have a chance to draft next year in this upcoming 2022 draft. But we have a lot of question marks to solve once we go on the field in just a few short weeks here against the Atlanta Falcons. I'm excited to see what the youth can do. I'm excited to see what Jalen can do. But most excitedly, I'm ready for college football this weekend. My Oregon Ducks are kicking off the season against Fresno State, as well as every other team in college football. There's a lot of players we need to keep our eye on, especially here in Philadelphia, on the defensive side of the ball. So when we come back here on segment two of the Locked On Eagles podcast, I will get into just that, breaking down some guys that I'm keeping an eye on here in week one of college football. But before we do that, we have a message from our friends over at Built Bar. You guys know about Built Bar at this time. Did you know they have all the delicious flavors that I'm a big mint brownie fan, big sea salt caramel guy. Lou, you know what he likes. People like the coconut. They like the cherry barcia. They have all the great flavors over at Built.com or BuiltBar.com. It will redirect you to Built.com, which is their new website. And if you haven't tried all the flavors, make sure to get a mix and match box where you can get a bunch of different flavors to try them all out. For everybody that wants to be health conscious, pretend like you're eating a candy bar, but in a protein bar, they only have 17 to 18 grams of protein only. That's as much as you're going to need in a single snack. So I highly suggest it. Calories only up to 180. That's better than any other fruity flavored snack that you're going to get, whether it be sugary. It's not going to be as good as a built bar with only four to five grams of sugar, four to five grams of net carbs. They are amazing, all tasty and all healthy. I put the code on the screen for everybody watching on YouTube. Go to built dot com today and use the promo code locked 15 that's locked one five and you'll get 15 percent off of your order use promo code locked one five to go get your bill bar i had one right before the show i highly suggest you go check out our great sponsors all right everybody welcome back to segment two of the locked on eagles podcast gino camilleri joining you here on this edition and we are talking college football Big weekend here in college football. It is kicking off. We had a great game between Ohio State and Minnesota last night, almost on upset alert. We had the first FCS team beat an FBS team in UC Davis taking down Tulsa, and it all comes down to the players that you have in your locker room and how willing 
and able they are to step on a football field and compete week in and week out. And there are a bunch of guys that I am keeping my eye on this weekend and last night when college football kicked off week one. Uh, actually, it was Wednesday between UAB and Jacksonville State, but there was a bunch of games last night. There's a few more games here tonight on Friday, and then tomorrow, Saturday, I will be plugged in. Got three TVs, two laptops going. I cannot wait. So kicking it off, you guys know I love to talk about UB Bulls on this show. And one guy I talked about a lot last year was Jarrett Patterson. Jarrett Patterson also happens. I have a twin brother named James Patterson. Although he is older, he currently is in college at UB as a linebacker. And when I talk about a linebacker, you really think of that middle of the field to the sideline, can get in on the blitz, can be your mic, can really do it all. He is that type of player. He's currently on the Senior Bowl watch list, a guy that we have our eyes on over at CGS as well if he is able to make his way down. He played against Wagner last night, who is an FCS opponent, but he went in there and dominated. When you play small school teams, you have to dominate. We know Joe Douglas loved to say that about small school players, and when you're playing against small schools, James Patterson did exactly that. You can go and catch that game on ESPN. They have the re replay of it. Highly suggest that James Patterson was a fun watch, as well as their offense that put up 69 points on offense. Moving to cornerback, which I fully believe is one of the two positions that they could target highly in this draft, as well as being safety and then potentially edge. There are some guys at cornerback which are generational type of players and Let's start with the big name, obviously, Derek Stingley. In the first segment, I talked about an all-pro player that you could bring in right away that could succeed and start opposite of Darius Slay if Steve Nelson were to move on, or even if Darius Slay were to retire within a year. Derek Sting Stingley has covered some of the best receivers coming out of college. He plays against Alabama every single year being at LSU. He's playing against the entire SEC being at LSU. He has played in big time moments. He played as a freshman in the national championship, has a ring to his name. They're taking on UCLA this weekend. I highly suggest you watch Derek Stingley because he is a once in a great while type of cornerback. I mean, they, they've been talking about this kid being ready to be in the NFL since he was in high school. So I'm excited to see if the Eagles have a chance with that much ammunition to go up and get a guy like that. Or if you want to wait around a little bit and still get a high-profile player, Josh Job. I mean, Pat Sertain was the guy at Alabama, but on the other side of him was Josh Job. They're taking on Miami in a very big game tonight, number one versus number 14. Josh Job is going to be matched up against a lot of that Miami talent. They have a lot of speed on that offense, so watch what he's able to do when he takes over as the number one corner now that Pat Sertain has moved on to the NFL. The other position I was talking about, Safety, one of my favorite positions, one I believe that they need to invest a day one or day two pick in as soon as possible, and this year is the year, in my opinion. One player, I have to mention my Oregon Ducks, Verone McKinley the third, number three. He is a free safety, really flies all over the back end of the field, is a turnover machine. They have a lot of great young talent in that defensive backfield. You can watch them, and you'll be very impressed. They have a big game against Ohio State next weekend. They're taking on the fast-paced Fresno State offense this weekend, which put up a ton of points last weekend and has very, very high-profile prospects in the running back unit and Ronnie Rivers, and then guys on the outside as well. They have a, a plethora of wide receivers that can really play. Rowan McKinley, you should have your eyes on this weekend. Then... Arguably the greatest name in college football outside of Storm Duck is Smoke Monday. As a safety, I think Smoke Monday is a great name to have. He's at Auburn. They're taking on Akron, a small Mac school, but he is a guy that once SEC time comes around, he comes the ball. Smoke Monday, I would love to have him in my Philadelphia Eagles defense. Really is a guy that can turn the tides of a game in an instant. You'll see what that player can do. I, I highly suggest you turn on an Auburn game at some point this weekend. There'll be a 3.30 Eastern CBS kickoff at some point. Get in and watch that game because Smoke Monday is a player that can play. The last one, a smaller school type of guy at the edge position, Cade Hall. They're playing USC. He's from San Jose State. They are a smaller school but they have a high-profile offense. 
plenty of defensive players that have come out in the last couple years and succeeded. Cade Hall is a guy who's an All-American, is on the watch list for the Senior Bowl as well, has scouts in the building watching him week in and week out, and we're only one week into the season. There's a lot of guys to be excited about, and I'm keeping a list. Every time I'm watching a game and I see a player that I like, I'm tossing his name on there because 2022 is a huge year for the Philadelphia Eagles when it comes to the draft, and they have that much ammunition. If you can add a player with the caliber of Derek Stingley to put on your back end, it's almost like adding Devontae Smith on the offense. You are now adding a player that you know you can write in for probably getting signed to a second contract, getting to a Pro Bowl, getting an All-Pro nod. Those guys are fantastic players, and I want Derek Stingley, Josh Job, any of those guys I named in Philadelphia come next season. When we, when I come back, excuse me, on segment three of the Locked On Eagles podcast, we will get into a new segment that Lou and I will be previewing. I will be doing it here in college football for this week, but then we will get into the NFL and do a lot of Philadelphia Eagles bets because we are here on the Locked On Eagles podcast. So come on back as we wrap up this segment for this edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. But before we do that, we have a message from our friends. We're talking betting. We're talking betonline.ag. It's that time of year again, and all eyes are turning to the football field as teams turn back to the gridiron to start the football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college action this season. Get all the updated odds, props, and contests, including Bet Online's biggest half million dollar NFL mega contest and the world's largest $200,000 NFL survivor contest. Open now at Bet Online. You know they are always great to go on. We get all our odds here on the Locked On Eagles podcast. And today, if you go there, you can get a 100% welcome bonus by using the promo code Locked On, which I put on the screen here on YouTube. Be sure to take advantage of their opening day super promo where you can make a bet on September 9th if you choose between the Super Bowl champion Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys, I rival here in the NFC East. If you lose that wager, so if you bet on the Cowboys, you will get back up to $25 for new customers only when signing up using the promo code NFL100. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports from football, basketball, boxing, MMA, your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait and take advantage of all the great offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts for everybody on YouTube. You can see on the screen promo code locked on for all our friends on the airwaves. It's L O C K E D O N. Excuse me. All right, everybody. Welcome on back here to segment three of the Locked On Eagles podcast. Gino Camilleri here to finish up this Friday edition of the show. We talked a little college football in the first two segments, how the Eagles can really look to ramp up their roster with some guys that I'm keeping my eye on here in week one. And in week one, we're talking college football betting. The best time of year when you could put in your wagers, you could sit back a game you might not be too interested in, it gets a little bit more exciting when you can bet responsibly with our friends at betonline.ag. And this is the first time we will be previewing this segment. It is called the LOE3 presented by betonline.ag. So what we will be doing during the season, and I will give you a little preview here, how it works. Lou and I, each week, uh, we're going to find a segment, maybe Friday, maybe Thursday, the last segment of the show. And each of us are going to do three bets, hopefully around the Philadelphia Eagles. For example, you could bet on a player prop like Devontae Smith over yards per game. Let's say the first game of the season over 66 and a half, for example. We can make a bet on that. Let's say I take the over, Lou takes the under. If it happens to hit that, I get the over, I get a point. So Lou and I will be keeping track of the wins all season long and We'll have a little fun contest here presented by our friends over at betonline.ag. AG, we will be making three picks per week. All the odds come from our friends over at BetOnline. So to start it up, I'm going to get you some college football answers here that I would say, in my opinion, if you're going to fade me, fade me now because I am the ultimate jinx. So this is up to you. You can make your own decisions here in gambling. I am not a betting expert, but here we go. First bet of the season, I am going against my Oregon Ducks in not a way, not the 
not the old uh, money line way. We're going plus 20 for Fresno State. Fresno State last week put up a ton of points. Oregon has a good defense, but they also have a very young offense, which has a lot of turnover when it comes to quarterback because Anthony Brown is the first-time starter. And you look at the wide receiver unit, they have a young player there. They have a lot of young guys like Michael Wright, for example, or Michael Pittman, for example, the younger Pitt, uh, brother of Pittman that is in uh, Indianapolis. And there's a lot of guys on the offensive line that are coming in and out. So Fresno can put up points. Oregon's defense can keep it close. I also believe Oregon will get off to a little bit of a shaky start on offense. Fresno State already had a game. I believe that it could be a 45 to, let's say, 30 game, and you cover with 20 points. So take Fresno State plus 20 at minus 105. The second bet of the season, I'm taking Texas A&M minus 29 and a half against Kent State out of the MAC at minus 115. Texas A&M is the sixth highest rated school in the country this season. They are taking on Colorado next week, which could be a look ahead game. But the thing is, Kent State is not a very good football team. They are one that struggles in MAC play even, and they have had a tough time putting together wins in the last couple seasons. They are starting to turn it around, but Texas A&M is just too good. 29 and a half points. You might see them cover that in the in the first half and then put their, their backups in and they'll get a few touchdowns. I think that is a game that they should dominate Kent State. Minus 115 that is a favorite and minus 29 and a half. I think if it went up to 31, you might be a little hesitant to take that, but I believe Texas A&M should come out on top. The last bet for this segment of LOE3, I'm not the biggest Fighting Irish fan, but I believe this, this line here is just, to me, uh, unbelievable that it's even on the board. Notre Dame minus 7.5 over FSU at plus 100, so that makes it the underdog, and Notre Dame is a much better team than FSU. They have continuous struggles on the offensive line. They will continue to probably get better here in the next couple of years if they can figure out how to really recruit that area after the last couple of years that they've really not succeeded there. I don't believe it is this year. Notre Dame is a much better team. They have a lot of big aspirations this year. They're looking to go to the college playoff. Again, they do have a young quarterback there now that Ian Book has taken off, but I think seven and a half points – I think they should cover by at least 14 at least, and they have a lot of speed on offense, which is going to make it a tough day for FSU, which doesn't have the fastest defense. So with that, I hope everybody got a little preview here of what we will be doing with the LOE3 presented by betonline.ag, one of our great sponsors. Make sure you bet responsibly. Make sure you know your bankroll. Make sure you know what your limit is, and make sure you're having fun doing it. And that's what we want here on the Locked On Eagles podcast. We want you tuning in five days a week here on the airwaves. Tuning in on Twitter, as you can see, GC24 for score football at Locked On Birds, which was on the YouTube all show. You could follow our good friend at DBLCLOE. LOE. Lou is having fun. He's heading down to Pittsburgh. So wish him the best of luck in his travels. Wish everybody that is playing in a college football game a safe weekend. Injuries are the worst part of the game. So fingers crossed everybody makes it out healthy. And I hope everybody at home is healthy. I hope everybody that tunes in, all of our fans, all your friends, family, everybody is living good. Everybody is doing well. And I wish you the absolute best. And thank you from the bottom of my heart, tuning in here week in and week out on the Locked On Eagles podcast, where you could find us at Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, anywhere on Odyssey as well, where you can also get the new Locked On Bets. We're talking a lot of betting here, where your podcast hosts, your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling get daily draft picks, blowout specials, and wrong team favored picks. As I saw that Notre Dame one was on the board, you got to take that one. I believe that's too good to be true. And Lee Sterling's lock of the day followed the Locked On Bets podcast brought to you by betonline.ag, wherever you get your podcast. You know where to find us. You know where to listen to us. You know where to see us. Make sure you give us a subscribe on all the platforms, a thumbs up. We love interacting with you guys and ladies and everybody else on Twitter. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the college football. And as always, fly Eagles fly.